You're listening to Lore Friendly with Chris Takashi and Alice Bell. Hi, guys. How did you spend uh, your Supermoon Sunday? Did you do anything special? My Supermoon Sunday, I was sat doing work in bed because essay season. Oh. Yeah. But I did I did decide to do a bit of reading. Because you know that I do like mythology and shit like that. So I thought, you know what? Yeah, I thought this would be like a national holiday for you. Like you and all the other vampires and werewolves and stuff. Although I guess it's more of a werewolf thing than a vampire thing, right? Moons don't affect vampires. It's just the sun. (laughs) Well, I decided to do a bit of research and I found a website called mysticinvestigations.com. And on December the 3rd, so yesterday at the time of recording... They posted the December Yule Supermoon of Christmas alert. Okay. (laughs) The Yule Moon of December is the only moon of the year that's almost consistently claimed by the forces of light on Earth. Oh, wow. Score one for the good guys. I know. December is the only month older werewolves won't transform in their ferocious furry forms. The younger ones who do transform will become white werewolves who are gentle as bunnies. (laughs) Most vampires... Most vampires beyond fourth generation will lose their urge for blood, whilst younger ones will temporarily become human during the period that the moon is at 100% full. Certainly a treat for vampire slayers. <laughs> and for, like, furries who want to pet werewolves. Yeah, I mean, this is the one time you, in the year that you can do it where they're completely yeah. tame. <laughs> if you but... had a werewolf petting zoo, <laughs> imagine that, you'd be doing good business. Open one night per year. Yeah. <laughs> So I I, um, decided to read a little bit more into this website because I thought this sounded amazing. it does. Cyber Monday Demon (laughs) Warning. (laughs) Um, Sure, it's a lot safer to do your shopping online, but there are still risks as you furiously type away and whip out your credit card. (laughs) These include the aforementioned demon possession for the weak-minded overwhelmed by material Uh, lust. They're talking about identity theft. (laughs) And the demon mammon, who has been known to possess internet servers so that he can make his way to potential victims' IP addresses. See, I like that. I like that it's a practical religion. I mean, there's nothing in, like, the Bible that talks about IP addresses and stuff like that, and identity no. theft, but here we have no, a practical right about religion that. that's... Yeah, we're putting, like, actual, like, criminal activity into, like spiritual terms it's a religion for the 21st century yeah it is and i'm just going to read out some of these titles (laughs) blasphemous black friday warning Mm. gobbler ghoul watch which is about a demon that looks like a turkey (laughs) (laughs) it's called the gobbler (laughs) (laughs) too much turkey can be harmful maybe there's one about like liquor that will help there should you be. curb your drinking habits. Yeah. I I, sh- I would probably need that. Um, this is a very practical, well-thought-out religion, I think. Yeah, I am so down with this. I haven't seen anything really thought about this densely mm. in a long time. Like This has got like a lot more detail in it. Than... Is there a Kickstarter demon? Because <laughs> I imagine those could be pretty dangerous. You see, what they do is they lure you in with false promises. (laughs) And then four years down the line, you get an update (laughs) that isn't actually from them, but is just kind of like taken from them. We're talking about Jeremy (laughs) Soule. Yeah. (laughs) So Jeremy Soule had a Kickstarter in 2013, which raised $121,227 for a new album. (laughs) One second. Went down the wrong hole. You alright? I'm dying, it's fine. Carry on. Okay. <laughs> I've been attacked by the gobbler. <laughs> <laughs> um and then four years down the line, after hearing nothing about, you know, the progress made by this Kickstarter, someone decided to like I I don't know, troll the Kickstarter page or they just posted a comment claiming to be Jeremy Soul, even though they're obviously just, you know... A random commenter. Yeah, a random commenter. And then in the post, it's like, 
he's basically saying like, okay, this is going to be a big symphony and I'm like working with new technologies, whatever that means. <laughs> new technologies for music? I mean, what is this, like dubstep or house or something like that? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Can you imagine how cool it would be to hear like the sky... I say imagine that, like there's probably like a million different dubstep remixes of <laughs> the Skyrim theme. We're not treading new ground here, but no. if Jeremy Soul made one, it'd be kind of cool, but... Would it though? It's basically just <laughs> this long, <laughs> this long uh, comment post giving explanation for why it's been so long and there's been no update. And it was signed like Jeremy Soul, even though it's not really Jeremy Soul, it's a random commenter. <laughs> So to sum it up, a troll posts a comment posing as Jeremy Soul on his Kickstarter page. And that in itself isn't that interesting, but yeah. a week later, the official page of Jeremy Soul takes this troll comment and posts it on the page yep. as if it's their own words. <laughs> like, oh, this this sounds like a good excuse. I'm going to use it. Just cribbed it and put it on the page. It's not even copying someone's homework like at least when you copy <laughs> someone's homework you change things around a bit that's like 100 <laughs> percent setting off the plagiarism filter that's like if i went to wikipedia and handed in a wikipedia article <laughs> it's like if i went on the bethesda forums and posted as todd howard and said elder scroll is being delayed so <laughs> skyrim can be brought to the commodore 64 and then Bethesda <laughs> taking that comment post and putting it on their official page. <laughs> Please do it. Please. <laughs> let's let's run an experiment. Yeah. Oh, man, Kickstarters, man. They never turn out the way you want them to. Yeah, it's very strange that they even decide to acknowledge this comment post, yeah. let alone just... <laughs> run with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, is, this sounds like a good excuse. Yep. Okay, yep, yeah, that saves us. Control C, Control V, there, uh, we're, oh, good. we're done. Yep, yeah, good, good. sorted. Everybody go home for the day. <laughs> Run away with your Kickstarter money. We're all good. So then naturally what happens is that Kotaku gets wind of this. They publish an article that blows up. Yeah. And all of a sudden, so Jeremy Soul now has to respond. And what he basically says is that, I didn't actually mean to copy paste this troll comment. <laughs> I thought these were my words that I had posted somewhere else. I wrote this. <laughs> That's going beyond plagiarism. <laughs> that guy plagiarized me. <laughs> um, so he basically said that he thought that those words were his and that, you know, he just had forgotten about him or something like that. And then he said, I'm actually going to release Northerner Diaries, the name of the album, on December 20th. But it's not the actual album. It's kind of just... <laughs> it's just snippets. <laughs> In his words, it's like a demo reel. The fully produced vignettes of my ideas. So it's not even the ideas. It's not even the full ideas. It's the vignettes of the ideas. It's just. It's just gonna be like MIDI files. Yeah. Like it's gonna be the Undertale soundtrack, but it's not meant to sound like that. It's just a bunch of scribbles on a page, more or less. <laughs> Oh my god, Kickstarter, man. They never turn out how you want them to. <laughs> and the fact that he's trying to push it, at, like, I've been totally working on this the past four years. Yeah, all the time. I've definitely not been taking your money and running. <laughs> I definitely didn't scribble these notes down like five minutes ago onto a page. <laughs> it's just like, shit, I've got called out for not handing in my homework. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. What do you think he did with oh. the money? At least he enjoyed the money. He probably deserves to be paid a lot of money for all the work he's done. So, I mean, to be fair, it is very easy to like underestimate how much money you're going to need for a project. So if he ran out of money, I'd kind of understand it and he just can't release anything. But the dude has worked in the music <laughs> industry for, what, 10, 20 years? Yeah, yeah. Like, he, he knows the average costs and things to work on what the kind of stuff that well, he works on no the, the thing so, like, is I, the goal was ten thousand dollars ten thousand he exceeded that he made 12 times that i know 
So before he made the project, he obviously, as a professional expert who knows how much money it requires, I mean, like, this wasn't just, like, like a random number posted out of his ass. He's a professional, like you said, right? Yeah. So he decided, as a professional, that $10,000 would be enough to make this, right? Yeah. Maybe, like, as soon as he got that much money, like, when you have that the thing you want to do if someone's given you all of this money and you've exceeded all of your wildest expectations to produce this thing is right shit right well i've just got to make it better and better (laughs) so he's probably just like stage fright or something well he did have a stretch goal of 100k to record the northerner at an esteemed recording facility (laughs) which may or may not be his like bathroom or something i don't know now, it wouldn't be the bathroom. That's got way too much echo into it. He'd do what, like, a professional sound engineer would do. And... But maybe you want the reverb. You want the reverb from the bathroom. You know, it's like a like a orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> it means you don't have to run it through the audacity feature. <laughs> See, I mean, I, I like how the terms are always so nebulous, like that esteemed recording facility. Like, he could actually name the studio, you know, if he wanted to, as a professional, again. But esteemed recording yeah. facility. Maybe it's called the esteemed recording facility. Oh, that's what I call my bath. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want yeah. to know what goes on in there. All kinds of... Is that where you are right now, Chris? Yes. I'm sitting on the throne right now. They call it the throne for a reason, because it's a palace. That is an image (laughs) that I did not need in my head. But yeah, look for that on December 20th. (laughs) Look for those snippets (laughs) of an idea. (laughs) Look for the one-minute demo reel. (laughs) Those vignettes. (laughs) It is literally going to be like five seconds each from a track. Do you think he talks like that? Like, using the words vignette, like, it's, uh, it just sounds like somebody who, like, uses big words for, like, no reason just to bullshit his way through things. <laughs> what, like me? Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm actually Jeremy Soule. Oh, okay. And you want to know what I did with all that money? Uh, yes, I do. Was it drinking? I spent <laughs> drinking and lipstick. Uh. <laughs> that is why I'm poor. If you follow me on Twitter, you get that reference. Are there, like, limited edition lipstick? Like, maybe you could sell your collection. Maybe your collection is worth something because they're, like, rare lipsticks. I mean, I do have some that have, like, gone out of production now. Ah. So I could probably get a little bit more for them. But at the same time, I wear every single lipstick, even Uh, the bright blue one. So I don't really want to give them away. So you just need to buy two lipsticks instead of one. Like, one for collecting and one for use. But then I could only buy half the amount of colours, because I can't afford my current lipstick collection Uh, where I've got one of every colour. You just need to have a Kickstarter, then. (laughs) That would solve all your problems. (laughs) Well, I'm doing alright with the Patreon, so... (laughs) Sorry, guys, that's where the Patreon money goes. It it goes to me drinking, it goes to my lipsticks. Sorry, guys. Doesn't go to anything important. Me living is important. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Living in style, not just yes. living. Because you don't technically I... need lipstick to live. Yes, I do. I am fucking fabulous. And I need to be able to express that by putting stupid shit on my lips. Hmm. Like <laughs> black. Or purple. Or blue. Is there anything else you want to talk about or should we go to Stranger Things? Oh! Oh! The competition! Oh, that's right. So... I completely you know how, forgot about this. So, <laughs> you know how last week we were talking about um, the Cyber Monday deals, and one of them was a Yeti microphone. That's right. That came bundled with Ask Creed. <laughs> and Chris, what did you buy for your Cyber Monday deals? I did buy a Blue Yeti and a complimentary Ask Creed that I am never going to play. So, so what are we going to do with this complimentary? We're going to do a giveaway. Hey, we're a proper fucking show now, guys. <laughs> so if any of you out there want to play Assassin's Creed Origins. For free. For free. For free. Just the original version, not the like the deluxe version or anything like that. It's yeah. just the plain, no. bare bones Assassin's Creed Origins. Uh, we're going to have a little trivia question. So... <laughs> In one of the early episodes, Alice and I played Oregon Trail. This was when we used to still do things that were vaguely history-based, so it was yes, a yes. while back. Yeah. 
<laughs> you can probably find it just by using the search function in YouTube. Uh, Lore Friendly Oregon Trail. But you should listen through all of the old ones anyway, so because they, yeah, they were all our best. Three times <laughs> with uh, <laughs> ad block turned off. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please do. Yes, Alice needs more lipstick. But yes. on this episode, we both played through the game and Alice died in both playthroughs. So the trivia question for this week and only this week, unless we have another <laughs> giveaway next week. Because we're not, unless we can get some more free games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the trivia <laughs> question for this week is, what was the cause of death for Alice on each playthrough? Yeah. Answer in the comments below of this YouTube video. Spoiler alert, it wasn't alcoholism. Yeah. I don't think that's actually an option in the actual game, so. Yeah. But yeah, answer in the comments below and also put your contact info in the about section of your YouTube page because some of the commentators don't have that um, because without it, we can't send a private message and that's the only way we'll be able to contact you. But yeah, answer in the comments below of this YouTube video, this podcast. If you're listening on another format, just go to the YouTube video. Man, listen to the old <laughs> podcast is fun. We were so like happy back then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was probably just faking it. <laughs> yeah, I'm always we, meh. <laughs> but we sounded so young and carefree and innocent, and now we're jaded, bitter. <laughs> See, cruel. I think you're describing me back then as well, but I think you've probably changed. Because, I mean, you're going through that <laughs> phase where you're going from a, a young, spry 18, 19 year old to like the adulthood where everyone is jaded, the world is miserable. I guess if you're talking about like the state of the world, then yeah, yeah, it was much happier times then. My voice is gradually lowering with my expectations of reality. So like, no, if you listen no. to the earlier podcast, it's quite high pitched and happy and just, you know, a lot of expression. And now it's gone really low because this is my opinion of the world. Yeah, the world can <laughs> close. <laughs> So yeah, go and listen to me and Chris not being jaded and find out how I died. And <laughs> <laughs> One other thing I should mention, it's a digital PC copy of Assassin's Creed. So if, you're, <laughs> <laughs> if you have an Xbox or PlayStation, then yeah, it's not going to work. So. Probably should have mentioned that at the start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just splice that in. Yeah, it's fine. So Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Episode 6, The Spy. It was episode 6, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. We only have three episodes left then, huh? Yeah. After we're this. kind of powering through this, just in time for Christmas. We still haven't seen the girl from the cold open. <laughs> I have no idea no, what they're going to do with her. <laughs> we're like, running out of time. It's definitely... If you're going to introduce a character like that, then you kind of want to allude to her a little bit more. Like, yeah. throughout the season, instead of just, like, leaving her to appear or not appear in the last three episodes. Yeah, it's a bit like, strange. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> hey! <laughs> there you go, Ken. But in general, like, that's, like, a character we don't even care about anyway. But as far as the characters we do care about, we haven't really seen much of, like, all the kids interacting together. It's been a really no. weird season, I think. Because that was part of the, the charm of the original season, right? It was the real it was just... strength, was that they had such fantastic child actors who yeah. worked really well off of each other, and we just... I miss that a lot. I think I said it last week as well, like, how they've sent Elle off on her own little arc and things, and it's just not got any of the pizzazz that it had when she was learning to interact with the kids and stuff. Yeah, and then Mike, we've barely even seen Mike, like, this this whole season, right? He's, like, barely appeared. Yeah, where even is Mike at the minute? <laughs> I've, I've watched this season, this is, like, my second to third watch through, and I don't know where Mike's gone. <laughs> I keep yeah. on forgetting where he is. I mean, he's supposed to be an independent character, right? He, he doesn't need L to exist. He, I assume he has some kind of personality, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he's like imaginative and he's the leader of the group, but where yeah, actually Yeah, that's true. He is was he? those. He was those things. Yeah. <laughs> in season 1. <laughs> now he's just kind of not. Yeah. Should we talk about this episode? In yeah. Particular? <laughs> <laughs> so we have Dustin and Steve to start with. They're doing this whole like 
road trip. For the yeah, road trip. They're gonna grab all this meat, put it in a bucket, and figure out how to trap this baby demogorgon. That sounds fun. That sounds like a really <laughs> fun day out. And while they're going down the tracks. Uh, I have in my notes, we have probably the worst advice any person can give a guy yeah. about girls ever. <laughs> Act like you don't care. Yeah, that is definite <laughs> 80s advice. I feel like people are a little bit more aware of how to speak to women. Yeah. Although if you go on Reddit, then maybe not. No, maybe not. Maybe uh, not. <laughs> I mean, I have I have gone onto the red pill a couple of times. And oh, God. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> wow. There are people who actually think like that. I don't understand <laughs> how Steve ever dated anyone with that kind of advice. But I mean, to be fair, he is pretty hot. Yeah, that's true. But see, that's the whole point. Like women don't like him because he doesn't care or because he's a bad boy or whatever they like him because he's no. like good looking and attractive it's not the the fact that yeah. he's an asshole that appeals to people like that's i think that's where it gets all confusing like women say oh i love the bad boy or i love this you know this particular type but it's not because they're bad or assholes you know it's just yeah because they're good looking like if jabba the hut He's a bad boy, but no one is attracted to him because he's Job of the Hut. Yeah. yeah. I mean, looks will get you far in life. Yeah. It's it's not the fact that you don't care. That's, well, that's not the reason why he's getting girls, but... It's the fact that you have good genetics yeah. and fucking amazing hair. We learned the secret behind his hair, yeah. which was amazing. Yes. The fear of faucet puffs. Mm-hmm. Got a shampoo, conditioner, and a couple of puffs of spray whilst it's damp. <laughs> So, there you go, guys. Are you going to try that tonight? I mean, I already have long, luscious hair with loads of volume, so mm. I don't need to follow that advice. Uh, yeah. I do shampoo, conditioner, and mousse, and hair oil. Ah, uh, there's the secret for the ladies out there. Yeah. If you want lovely, luscious locks that have not been <laughs> oh. ravaged by years and years of hair dye, <laughs> yes. then there you go. Yes. And don't act like you don't care. Yeah. Don't act. <laughs> just be yourself. Yeah, just be yourself. <laughs> See? Here we go. Oh, we should have a new segment called Relationship Advice with Chris and Alice. Because yes. obviously, obviously, we are very experienced <laughs> in this. Maybe this is why we don't have relationships, no. Chris. I just don't <laughs> try. <laughs> <laughs> We follow our own advice, and our own advice ain't getting us anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even try, so I don't even attempt to see if my advice works or not, so. <laughs> see, I try, but... <laughs> but the advice isn't working. I try, but following my own advice is hard, okay? Uh, I'm not very good at being myself, because myself is kind of a dick. Uh, you just show up as Jeremy Soul, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like you're not getting what you paid for <laughs> have, have a big yet <laughs> this is what i want to present myself as on a date this isn't necessarily what we're getting <laughs> i know it's taken me a while to get this date organized <laughs> and i'm not actually going to turn up to it but what i can do <laughs> Is I can send you a photo of how I would have dressed. Yes. <laughs> here you go. You're just gonna have to be satisfied by that for now, yeah. okay? It's it, it's not even a photo. It's a drawing because the new technologies <laughs> yeah. haven't been invented yet to make the photo that I want. <laughs> I'm still waiting on those. The size of this photo, it, it was bigger than I expected, and so I couldn't produce it using the existing technology. I wanted the proper resolution. Yeah. So here's this drawing of an idea of what I might look like. It's a vignette. <laughs> it's basically Tinder. This is, this is what I want to present to you. This isn't actually me. <laughs> <laughs> we are all Jeremy Saul in one way or another. Ow. 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 Ah. I don't like laughing.
Nothing hurts. <laughs> you ah. work out for the day, for the month of the year. So Steve's terrible ah. advice obviously backfires, <laughs> and we get you know Lucas and Max, the one true pairing. Bonding. Yes. Aww. Holding hands. They're cute. They're cute together. Being themselves, sharing stories. Being honest and open yes. with each other. And we learn a little bit about a little bit more about Max's backstory. Yes. Which is nice. Which was surprisingly normal. Like I was going into this thinking like they were like a spy family from the Institute or some shit. <laughs> and then instead they're just The Institute. Yeah, <laughs> from the Hawkins lab. <laughs> or whatever. Um <laughs> But it turns out just family troubles, stuff like that. Stepbrother, yeah. who's a dick. And she's kind of bonded with Lucas. Just- and right after that, they get attacked by the Demogorgons. And there are... They get a- demodogged. Yeah, there are a lot of them, which surprised yeah. me. Yeah, I was not expecting that many. I don't think anyone was. Yeah, like, what have they been doing? Like, if there's that many, like, they'd have to eat something, right? I mean, we had one baby demigorgon eating a cat like maybe like all the animals in a uh, hawkins are probably eaten alive i mean it's just yeah i'd have thought that we'd have heard a little bit more about that or i don't know they could have set the scene a little bit more by having like lots of missing pet posters or something yeah. or, just like his background dressing or something yeah. just to elude that yeah not everything's as it seems Cause, kind yeah, of cause thing yeah because they don't want to give it away but they can maybe imply yeah. that it was dart eating all those animals right yeah or they they could have um you know how there were pumpkin farmers and stuff like that they could have been had some background chatter about like how someone's going in and stealing the livestock as well or something like that like they could have just alluded to something being a little bit up because we've seen the destruction that dark can cause so a half dozen tiny darts they should have had more of an impact on hawkins I was half expecting Dart to show up there and, like, save the kids because it's, you know, nurture yeah. over nature. I still think that's going to happen. I mean, you already know if that is, but it just seems like it's going to play out that way. Why else would they have this yeah. bond between the two of them and have multiple Demogorgons for Dart to attack? And yeah. I mean, they're not going to have Dustin waste all that nougat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or nougat. How, how do you pronounce it? Nougat or nougat? That's what I was surprised, too. Um, they were using meat instead of three musketeers, which, I mean, they should have been using, but maybe that's later on. But the other thing that happened was John and Nancy finally did the deed. <laughs> it's about time. Uh, I just, I, I prefer Nancy and Steve. Oh. <laughs> But Steve is the guy who gives the terrible romantic advice. He probably does the same shit to Nancy. Act like he doesn't care. <laughs> no, but he said that Nancy was different and that she changed his perspective no, on yeah, things a little yeah, bit. Maybe. And I feel like st- st- I just enjoy Steve because he had a lot of interesting character development, especially over the last, like the previous season and then going into this season. He's changed a lot. He's not a dickhead. No. Yeah. And I feel like it was. A nice subversion <laughs> to have. As a character, he's better. But as a human being, like, Jonathan was already there. He was already a nice guy, so... <laughs> uh, but, like, character-wise and story-wise, I felt like Nancy and Steve's relationship um, subverted some tropes, whereas um, Nancy and Jonathan yeah, is more... Yeah, Jonathan and Nancy is basically classic 80s yeah. kind of thing. I mean, I think that's what happened in the Goonies, right? Didn't oh, you didn't watch the Goonies? No, I didn't watch the Goonies. That's before my but time. Didn't the older sister? Didn't Samwise's older sister and like the sort of Jonathan-like character start dating at the end of that? I, I don't remember who it was exactly. I don't know, Chris. I have never watched the Goonies. <laughs> but there are two high school kids along with all the little kids, and I think Jonathan and uh, Nancy is okay. sort of a mirror for that relationship. But but this was after they um, watered down the tapes and they drank some vodka, which again, waste of good vodka. Do people water down drinks? I don't understand this um, concept. Do they? So when I've been getting a little bit too fun at house parties, I have maybe had my vodka replaced with mm-hmm. water. Without telling me. <laughs> well, see, that, that's Yeah, that's I don't choose though. to water it down. Yeah. <laughs> or you could just drink less. I mean, I don't understand the watering down part. Like, just drink less. 
and you're drinking the same content of vodka you're just not having water in it so i don't know well maybe the taste is just awful so they don't like the taste yeah i could down that way. i'm not super keen on the taste of vodka by itself i like it yeah. to give like a kick to something else mm-hmm. but i would not drink watered down vodka by itself Whoa. isn't it tonic tonic or is yeah it vodka like tonic with fizzy thing? water or something like that like that's yeah you can have like vodka and tonic or vodka and fizzy water vodka and soda whatever like that's mm. all fine because it's adding something then whereas yeah. just adding water to it is just oh it's still going to kick you in the back of the throat but yeah but we've established this conspiracy guy is just a off character he's just he doesn't make sense as a character yeah so. <laughs> It's natural that he's going to suggest vodka. It's, it's the epitome of his messed up character. <laughs> yeah. Backwards character, more yeah. or less. Because in real life, he would be adding more vodka. It's just, <laughs> yeah. It's just, we need to tell the truth. We need to get the truth out. <laughs> He'd be adding whiskey to the vodka. <laughs> the earth is flat. The moon landing was faked. It was fake, though. <laughs> oh, God. Why are you presenting that as being a crazy conspiracy theory, Chris? Do you also think that dinosaurs aren't real? Is that why there's no dinosaur ghosts? How can the dinosaurs be real if our eyes aren't real? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Just be careful when you go out on a walk next time. You don't fall off the edge of the earth. Um, <laughs> so the last thing uh, that happened this episode, the big thing more or less, is Will tricking the Institute cops or security, having them go into that tunnel and being eaten alive by the dogs. The Demogorgon dogs. Which was a really well done twist. Yeah, because like the Demogorgon was spying on them versus Will spying mm-hmm. on the Demogorgon. Or not Demogorgon, the Big Bad, whatever you want to call it. And the whole episode was called Super Spy. So even the episode title was a twist. Yeah, it was really well done. That is how you do a twist. Because there were allusions to the fact that Will was losing himself and that he wasn't necessarily yeah. in charge and things like that. And so it was a well done twist because it was established that there are conditions that have been set and they are met. And so it didn't, it wasn't completely out of left field. It was more like, oh shit, how did we not see this? It's interesting that Paul Reiser's character, the the scientist, was actually concerned for Will's well being. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious to see how this will kind of change that perspective if it does. Because, like, he was the one who was, like, holding out, like, okay, we need to make sure this kid lives. And the others were just like, oh, just let him fry, right? Yeah. So. He's definitely showing a different side to the Institute. Yeah, than the previous guy who was just, you know, just use his own daughter for whatever means necessary. Yeah. But, yeah, so I'm a little bit interested to see how that sort of changes the dynamic, if it does at all. Yeah. Uh, I am having to, like, dodge the spoilers because I like to use Twitter a lot. I'm having to dodge the spoilers like the Matrix because, I, like, I'll see some, like, picture of Bob and I'm like, ah, close, close. And You're doing I'll a pretty a good job of, of yeah. like, avoiding it. <laughs> I saw something about Eleven the other day and I was, like, like a picture of her in the corner of the, my screen and I immediately closed. It's just, you know, dodging bullets like the Matrix. But three episodes left. You can do it. Three more weeks. Yeah. Or you could just power ahead. And do what I did, and forget everything that happens in every episode. <laughs> but then I'd have to watch it again, and that would be an unproductive use of your time. No, nah. I'd rather just sit around and stare at nothing. Fair. I too would like to do nothing else with my life but sit around and do fuck all. That is the dream. Just like Jeremy Soul. <laughs> but yeah, anything else from this? last episode that you want to talk about yeah we kind kind of speeded through the end there um where's 11 another episode without her they ignored her this episode mm. it just goes to show that that whole like storyline is kind of thin that they're having to spread it out a bit that she's the side plot and she really shouldn't be the side plot (laughs) because she's one of the more intriguing aspects of the show Oh yeah, like it just goes back to the fact that the kids just have very little screen time together in general. Mm. And it was quite a disappointment because the kids were great. But it may be in season three or something. Maybe they're just like kind of spacing it out because they have like. Maybe they'll have a big old reunion. 
It has been renewed for season three. Yeah, I think they said they're going to have like three or four seasons at the most. So we've got three more episodes. Any idea what we're going to do once those are done? <laughs> Christmas films! <gasps> right, what episode are we going to be on at the end of this week? Is this going to be episode 47? I don't know. We should do Star Wars at some point, which means I'd have to go to the theater again. Yeah. Do they have movie earplugs? But we should do, we should do, Chris, we need to do the Star Wars Christmas special. What? Why is there a Christmas special? What is that? Have you not seen it? No. Oh my God. Is it like a Charlie Brown kind of Christmas special? Like it's on every year? Oh my God, Chris, it is, it is something, man. Okay. It is. Well, stay tuned for okay, that. Okay, so we're on, um, yeah. So that'll be our 51st episode. And we can also review <laughs> the amazing Jeremy Soule's Northerner Diaries vignette of an idea <laughs> of a scribbling he made on a napkin. Literally the Tinder profile, the Tinder profile of his, yeah. of his work. December 20th. I, I can't wait. <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely interested to see how much content he's actually going to put <laughs> Well, out. how much content he put out in a span of, what, 20 days? <laughs> Because he's working on yeah. it right now. He's he's furiously scribbling it's on those napkins. Like, Shit! I've got so much work to do. <sighs> so much cash to burn. Just pulling some all nighters. Yeah. So that's it for this episode of Lord Friendly. Remember to enter our competition. Yes, in the comments below, and make yourself accessible by leaving your contact info on your YouTube about page. And on that <laughs> note. Is there anything else you would like to say, no. Chris? Other than goodbye. Then say goodbye, Chris. <laughs> goodbye. Damn it. Goodbye. <laughs>yeah well <laughs> it was the champagne i room, actually. would probably yeah i would probably turn up into the drunk room because let's face it <laughs> you like to drink yeah a lot <laughs> it's it's actually doing me actual harm i can't drink as much as i used to yeah, and it's I mean, upsetting it's me greatly in like almost every single way it's i mean oh yeah like i am literally killing myself slowly and painfully <laughs> At least it's at the back end. It's not like you're taking away your prime years by drinking all this much. You're just taking away years from the back end, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, I mean, I never wanted to live to 80 anyway, <laughs> to be fair. Yeah, I mean, it's like when they say, like, I don't smoke or anything like that, but when they say, like, oh, cigarettes, every cigarette will take, like, 10 minutes off your life or whatever, but it's, like, 10 minutes at the end. I mean, yeah, like, the end's the worst bit. <laughs> yeah, well, although I'm sure, like, emphysema is, like, incredibly painful, so it's going to be an incredibly painful end, but yeah. Um, yeah. It's still the end. You're not but, losing years 20 to 25. Yeah, like, as soon as I hit 30, then, like, that's it. I'm <laughs> done. I can do whatever the hell I want with my life. I've been through all the best yeah, bits. It's more or less just waiting for the end. Yeah. Yeah. Inspirational <laughs> quotes with Chris Takahashi. <laughs> <laughs>